So, so I'm really happy that this works now. Um, uh, I, I have the honor of, of actually like inter having the talk that says, okay, how, how to start using the radio with, with something um, that I want to do myself and not only uh, reproduce something that someone else built somewhere. So the um, topic of my talk is from uh, 0 to 60 or 30 minutes. I guess we're going to do it in 15. Um, uh, this is going to be fun, I hope. Uh, I have I have small demo on here, so maybe this will work out. Um, so so what I am is an electrical engineer, which means that in practice nothing works. Huh? In practice, there's nothing you can do. You have your tools, you have your problem, you analyze your problem, you apply your tools, you implement a solution, and then it's just like improvement by yeah, uh, iteration. So so in the end, um, you go from I have my tools, I have my problem, I have my solution. Um, and in reality, it's usually that is the kind of special with the radio, which is kind of the thing that I'm here for. Um, the reality is, yeah, you get your tools ready, then you fix the bugs in the installer of your tools, then um, you familiarize with your tools, and then you really understand your problem again, and then then you get coffee for the third time today. And um, in the end, it all takes takes a long time to actually get get a system running. But that's really how like. <laughs> How, how uh, engineering works. Um, so um, rough structure is, um, this was my intro. Um, then I'm gonna quickly go over how to actually get the radio because um, as Daniel said, it's, it's, it's a package and it's available for most distros, but um, there's caveats. And um, yeah, then, then I'm gonna go about how to really like, go and solve an actual problem uh, by uh, designing your own radio application. And if there's nothing that is already there to solve your problem, how to build your own tools with the radio. Um, uh, so getting the radio is a little bit challenging often because, um, well, GNU radio is a relatively big project and it does a lot of DSP stuff and it has visualization, so we got a lot of dependencies. Um, in fact, there, those are just really short excerpt and there's a few of my favorites in there and everyone remembers Rift, like um, the only only project in the world that I don't know anyone who actually built the full configure, include all of this uh, features thing. Um, and there's a really a lot of problems um, building, uh, just, just getting the right um, dependencies on many of the <coughs> operating systems. Then of course it's like we're trying to be cross-platform which means um, where we support Linux and that means Look in all the right places for the different uh, dif uh, different distros. Um, we also um, have a lot of people that, that do their work on OS X, so um, this is a pretty uh, popular platform and it's pretty well supported um, uh, in our community. And then we have Windows, which is also a popular uh, platform, but not really a well supported platform. I, yet I'd say we have have Jeff, who, who actually uh, works a lot on that, but um, it's kind of like. Windows development feels strange to a lot of us, to say the least. <laughs> um, and also all the facts that, that in Windows development, like you can't be sure that headers are somewhere user included or somewhere similar. It's like really strange, um, and, and it's making it hard for us. But it's, it's um, a work in progress, so if you want to help with that, that would be awesome. I'm, I'm pretty sure that we can use a lot of help with that. Um, so what's also changing is that, um, you know, the radio is a software development tool kit kind of thing. So you might want to like take a deep dive, like like the gentleman who asked about a textbook might actually want to like develop a feature with the radio, actually fiddling with the interior workings uh, and not mess up his like the, the, the bread bringer of the radio that he uses to like do his SDR work for his employer. Um, so, so this is this is a really often encountered problem that you actually want to have different environments on your same computer and not always spin up a uh, virtual machine just to like you know try a different version of something. Um, so, um, well, obviously the optimal solution for uh, for installing the radio is like use your distro. Well, the, the distro managers. They usually, the maintainers, their job and their dedication is actually like to figure out how to build software in a way that they can package it and they always include the right dependencies and you never end up with something that doesn't work with the version of the library that's installed. So if you can, 
obviously you, you you'd normally use a uh, distro package. And the reality is like GNU Radio is not only one project, it's like GNU Radio and then there's the ecosystem with a lot of uh, people actually just write an out of tree module, write software that uses GNU Radio and is maybe very useful for someone else, but it's not realistic that they're gonna end up writing like a package for Debian, for Fedora, for Red Hat, for whatever. Um, that's really not, not the case in the normal sense. So um, <coughs> the only thing that we can do is make that easy and also have some mechanism uh, to, to uh, install that. And of course, like if you want to have new radio with control port for some reason, you need first and first in a recent version, and you just won't get that on most distros today. It's like not very probable that it comes with that right version. Um, and all the versions are broken, but that doesn't change the fact that Red Hat can't go back in history and just ship the newer version. And um, so. Uh, here you are with that problem. Um, and also, like obviously, this, this is an open source developers meeting, so everyone wants to look at the code and build it themselves. If it, I mean, aside from Gento people, that's really nice for, for if you want to look <coughs> into something. Um, <coughs> enter PyBombs. PyBombs is our, I always forget the full acronym, so this is our Python build overlay managed bump system, um, which, which takes um, the job of um, uh, knowing how to install dependencies, knowing what a dependency a package, including the radio, has. Um, it knows how to install um, it using your distro standard ways, or it knows how to build them from source if there is no standard ways, or you ask it to build from source. So this is this is really a nice. Uh, we can think of it as something that actually like just takes the burden of. No, going to the website, knowing the Git repo that you have to clone, knowing how to call configure, how, knowing how to call make or a seed make or whatever, um, and installs it uh, into a prefix. And this is this is really interesting. A prefix is a directory where you put your stuff, and you just like point to the runtime library linker, and you point your path in there, and suddenly stuff is there, and you can execute whatever can read a companion. And it works. And if you don't set the uh, variables, your Linux system or your OS X system just doesn't know that like there's other libraries in there, and it doesn't every ever interfere with operation of your normal system. So, so this is something that uh, it has been very very helpful uh, for people that run experimental software everywhere basically since forever also. But no one knows that if you're a, a Python dev, you might have to use virtual amps. So this is kind of the same idea. Um, you basically just set the right variables and Python knows where to look for Python modules. Um, so, um, getting PyBombs is really simple. I'm not going to go into detail about that for, for temporary reasons. Um, um, using it is even simpler. You just like say, okay, this is the script that says all my, set, sets all my paths, and you're done. You do that, and then you can call your radio uh, and it start with radio applications, and everything's there. Um, um, but I, I mentioned that it is an ecosystem, and um, Ben mentioned that in his intro. Uh, we have Cgram, and there's like every a lot of out of three months or a lot of applications that people develop are already available easily, and you can just install them by saying pybombs install or whatever uh, pypcat, and then you suddenly have an interface for um, capturing packets um, with with Wireshark. Uh, um, uh, in Blue Radio. So this is pretty awesome and it eases the installation of stuff pretty much and also it gives us like uh, the, the ability to distribute something easily, have like the central idea of what's there, what, what what's missing and uh, also like where to report bugs and this kind of thing. Um, so this is a chapter break. I should have marked that more clearly. Um, we're coming to the part where we um, actually go from Okay, we have GNU Radio, we have ways to install it. Um, we have the idea that GNU Radio is some kind of, um, yeah, five minutes, uh, some kind of, of uh, uh, signal processing um, system. Um, but, but how do we get from these abstract ideas to an actual implementation? And so, so what I did is um, I, I looked at a simple like um, physical uh, radio receiver and 
that's what we often think about it. Um, it's, it's, it's a chain. It's a chain of uh, there's an antenna, there's an amplifier, there's filters, there's mixer, there's an analog to digital converter, there's a digital PLL. So in my car radio, <coughs> whatever something locks onto the channel I want to receive. Then there's the freak it's an FM demodulator, an equalizer, so it doesn't sound sound as shitty. And then there's like the digital to analog uh, converter that goes into my uh, um, microphone, uh, uh, loudspeaker amplifier, and then there's the loudspeaker. And so this is my whole system, and it's, this is how I want to understand it, and how I want to represent it <coughs> at the end in my software that I'm gonna write, because you know, so for different radio. Um, so um, if you translate that into um, new radio, and then it looks kind of like this. Um, I'm gonna jump back to the, to the last slide couple of times, so we have the use of P source or the RTL FDM source, or usually you just use the Osmocom source, which is like, yes, this guy wrote that, so, um, um, uh, which covers a lot of hardware receivers, and that has the job of, like, that encapsulates your hardware interface, which usually ends here. Um, so this is all encapsulated by hardware source, and, um, so the, the next thing we do is like the, the carrier tracking, then we have the FM demo, but this, this maps one to one to like the logical blocks that you have in mind when you're designing that system. Okay, then you have, I, I built like an, an equalizer that I could explain in four or five set, sentences. Like we have three, uh, three grand pass filters and everyone covers an, another part of, of the audio band. Um, everyone has a different gain and we end up with, uh, we add them back up. So we can like ch uh, uh, change the amplitude of like the bass, the medium tones, the high tones, and then we just feed it into our audio sync, which is like <coughs> everything that the sound card and everything behind that does. Um, so so this is like um, theory of software uh, of of your system converted to uh, practice in less than two minutes. Um, um, so um, uh, I I'd have a demo. But I, I, I'd rather actually skip that because Daniel actually had like showed the same demo with GQRX, which of course looks nicer, and I just like had the same flow graph for um, uh, handset uh, um, radio, so um, that works. Um, so that's this is my whole flow graph that works, and it looks like that after you click together um, this. So you can build. A co an application that actually like receives the whole FM band by clicking <coughs> together this in the GNU Radio Companion, which is kind of awesome. Um, because if you understand what you want to do, then getting from well, here to there is really like five minutes of work. Um, that is the power of, of software-defined radio and especially GNU Radio. If you've got the right tools, you can just build what you want like in a minute. So, um, but I have a minute left, so I, I, I'd like to point, uh, to point out that it's not always the case. We don't always have the tools. For example, um, if, if you want to build something really absurd, well, no one's going to be there to, to build that before you, you come there. So, um, you invent an out-of-tree module, which is like our kind of saying, okay, this is a new radio package. You can have your blocks in there. You can have your... Uh, flow graphs in there, you can build your application in one directory and share that with other people. Um, um, so uh, you build your radio <coughs> package, and um, that's really easy. There we have tools, new radio mod tool, which is meant to like build modules. We just add a new tool, and my example for that is you can actually like build. I, I thought, okay, what's what's absurd? And I said, okay, let's let's do a speaking clock that says, okay, at the next peep, it's Whatever, too late. Your time is over. <laughs> so, um, how to do that? Okay, I, I'm, I'm lazy. I'm just going to use something existing and um, write a Python block because you can write new radio uh, blocks in C++ and Python. And because I'm lazy, obviously, I'm going to go for Python. And why do I do that? Okay, we're going to skip that point. And <laughs> how, how, how should it look like? It's really like I have a clock and it just says at the next beep, it's so and so. And, um, Actually, what I did then is like, okay, I, I make a new module, so new mod speaking clock. So, uh, okay, I, I get that new module. Now I change it to a directory. I add a new block. I say it should be Python. And then I add the functionality, which is like eight lines of code at the right place. Mm, if you have a demo, though? Yeah, okay. So we can do that. We will have to skip Q&A because I want to see the demo. 
And I'm sure. just gonna, I'm just gonna say, say what, like we have to let people out of the room, like more than we can let in. So I'm gonna walk over there and be about. So, so, so the demo is really short. We can do that actually while people. No, we can't. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> okay. Um. Doc Brown says so. Um. Uh, here we go. Um. Um. So. But the next thing, it will be 12 hours, 25 minutes, 10 seconds. Which means I have. The next thing, it will be 12 hours, 25 minutes, 30 seconds. So um, that, that, that works. <laughs> and um, um, everything that I did was actually like write this block. Now, um, how does that block look like? Um, well, I'm... Um, Um, so it's, it's the utmost ugly code that I could come up yesterday night. Um, uh, so, so, so it actually like it's a state machine that says, okay, am I currently emitting samples? Am I waiting for the next time to say ding ding ding? Or am I currently speaking? And then it just like plays the ding 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 song uh, or um, uh, um, wait. Um, whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> that Where is it? Yeah, it actually um, uh, generates the voice for the next second while I'm waiting for it and uh, does that by calling eSpeed on the command line. So this is the most what? stupid way to do this, but it actually worked. And it was like 20 lines of Python and I, I put it into different <laughs> things because I wanted to have time commands, but I, in the end, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, this is all that, that matters actually is in this work method, which really just takes the input sample. In my case, it was a source because you no, know, there's no <coughs> input on the top. Um, then it uh, generates output items, and I write <coughs> the items whatever I want to get generate, and that's how you write in the radio blocks basically. So this was a really, really, really short intro to write, uh, on writing radio blocks. Um, I actually rather have a little bit of Q&A, so I'm gonna uh, uh, contradict Dr. Brown here. Okay, you have one minute, and people can start leaving the room while you can. Yeah, exactly.